Hi, Scooter people. So about a month ago, Steve from Scooter in the Sticks posted this YouTube video talking about front end wobble in the Vespa GTS. And basically, uh, he was getting questions from some of his viewers about people that were experiencing front end wobble. And he talks about it in this video. He demonstrates it. And then he basically says, um, you know, it's an inherent characteristic of the GTS. It's not really a problem. All you have to do is uh, damp, damp, damp the wobble, can't even talk, damp the wobble with, uh, by holding the handlebars. And you don't have to hold them very tight. You basically just have to put your hands on them. So is this kind of stuff is perfectly normal on a GTS. So that was his demonstration of the wobble. And he talks about the fact that it, it tends to happen when you're decelerating at 40 miles an hour down to, you know, something a little bit below that. Um, so it, it kind of got me thinking because I haven't experienced that issue on my bike at all, but I know that both wobble and weave are characteristics and problems to a greater or lesser extent on all bicycles and motorcycles. And it is a function of design but they're also sort of complex systems. And so there are a whole lot of other factors that can play into it. So I was curious and I did a search for Vespa GTS wobble. And um, when you look on the forums like Modern Vespa and others, there are a whole bunch of conversation threads talking about it with you know, various fixes that may or may not, may or may not work. Um, so I, I also uh, looked at a couple of other things that I thought were interesting. There are two articles in uh, Cycle World uh, both by uh, Kevin Cameron, one in 2018, and then another one in uh, 2019. And these articles basically talk about, um, you know, wobble weave stability uh, in vehicles, but obviously the, the main focus is on motorcycles. So they talk about wheel size um, in road racing, the, the move to 16 inch wheels and then 18 inch wheels and then 17 inch wheels as um, design factors in uh, basically creating a compromise between uh, quick steering and stability. Um, and then they go on and talk about sort of why it is, the sort of physics of it, if you will. And uh, I'll just read this real quick. Bicycles and motorcycles are a pair of castered wheels joined at a common pivot, the steering head. The front caster is quite short. On a motorcycle, the center of the front's tire footprint trails the projection of the steering axis onto the road by roughly four inches. The rear caster is much longer, feet rather than inch inches. Casters, as we can see anytime we push a supermarket cart, are capable of oscillation, the castering wheel swinging rapidly from side to side, which is what he just demonstrated, Steve, in his uh, video. Uh, motorcycle engineers call the oscillation of the front caster wobble and the oscillation of the rear caster weave. The short front caster of a motorcycle oscillates very rapidly, typically at eight to 10 cy cycles per second, blah, blah, blah. Standard test for control stability, yada, yada, yada. Professional motorcycle testers do something very similar. With hands off the bars, they deliver a steer thump. A highly stable bike responds by quickly self-centering with almost no perceptible oscillation. A less stable bike responds with wobble that quickly dies away. A bike with marginal stability may enter a steady state wobble. In the worst case is a wobble that increases without limit called divergence. So wobble is generally easily damped by hands on the bars or by a steering damper. Uh, natural damping of the wobble mode increases after roughly 40 miles per hour. In other words, if you're going more than 40, you're less likely to experience the wobble in the first place. Uh, stability against wobble is also increased by reducing the steered mass. The steered mass being the front wheel, brake, fork, plus any additional load. Uh, and then they go on to talk about weave. There's this video, which is an old uh, British video that talks about wobble and weave. I have it queued up here. And so they're just showing it on different makes of, of motorcycles. The basic design of a motorcycle could give rise to weave and wobble. The front is basically like a tea trolley caster. The angle of the forks puts the steering point ahead of the contact area of the tire. This distance produces low speed wobble at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Just like a tea trolley caster wobbles at certain speeds. At slow speed, the wheel will wobble quite freely under certain conditions if the handlebars are released. The rider doesn't normally experience this problem because the energy of the wobble is low, and just holding the handlebars is enough to stop it. You can see the rapid wheel flutter here on the police northeast. 
removing the fairing makes no difference at all. A BMW shows just the same effect. So anyway, it's a characteristic of, uh, of bicycles and motorcycles. And I, I thought it was interesting that there's so many people having the issues with the GTS because, as I say, I haven't experienced it. And uh, in just a minute, I'm going to go for a ride and uh, shoot some video demonstrating what, uh, what I see. So, you know, the factors that can influence it are, are many. Um, you know, do you have a front fairing? Do you have a front rack? Do you have uh, a load on the rack? What's the condition of the, uh, the bearings in your steering head? What's the condition of the bearings in your axle? Um, is your wheel balanced? What's your tire wear? You know, all of those sorts of things. Um, so, you know, basically it's a complex system. And I, you know, I think I agree with Steve in the, the sense that, you know, he asks the question, is it a problem? And I think his uh, answer is essentially, no, it's not a problem. Um, you know, you may experience it, but the solution is simple. You know, you just put a hand on the handlebar and that, uh, that damps the, the wobble enough that it, that it goes away. So it's not a safety issue. It's not a control issue. Um, I guess one of the things that I wanted to address uh, in this video is there's this idea that it's, a, that it's unique to the Vespa GTS. And it may be that among the Vespa models, the GTS has a, a higher prop propensity to wobble based on, its, uh, you know, based on its design characteristics. I don't know. Um, this is my first Vespa, but um, you know it, it's an issue to a greater or lesser extent with every bicycle and every motorcycle, just based on the nature of the beast. So um, you know. So anyway, I just uh, I just thought it was sort of an interesting issue, uh, and uh, you know it, it got my curio curiosity up enough that uh, you know that I found these articles and I thought that they were pretty informative. Um, I'll put links to all of these things, uh, Steve's original YouTube post and uh, these two articles. Uh, this video is actually embedded in this, uh, in this first uh, 2018 article on Cycle World. But I'll put links to these below if you're curious about it. And uh, let me jump on my bike and show you what I experience. Okay, so I am on the bike and let's do a little stability test here. I'm going to bring it up to uh, about 50 and then take my hands off and see, uh, see if we get any wobble. Uh, I have not experienced any wobble to date, so we'll see what we get. So let me get up to about 50, we're at 50, and hands off. 45, 40, 35, tiny, tiny, tiny hint of wobble there, 30. 25 and I'm gonna go so that's consistent with what I've experienced so far um, this is a stock bike I've got 545 miles on it uh, the tires are the uh, the stock Michelin uh, city grip I'm on a pretty good road surface there's a little bit of wind um, I weigh about uh, 2 215 so if my weight is a factor in it uh, the only thing that I can think of uh, that might also be a factor and in fact it probably is a factor is that I have installed a, uh, a liquid tire sealant and dynamic balancer uh, called ride on in my tires and as the the wheel spins the ride-on spreads itself uh, inside the tire and kind of like tire beads it's meant to uh, provide dynamic balancing and then it also provides puncture protection so that could be a factor so let's start from a little lower speed this time let's start from 45 okay so 45 no hands again just a tiny tiniest little bit of a you can barely feel it shimmy at about 35 36 let's bring it up again to 40 and try okay so i'm going to start at just above 40. nobody behind me hands off yeah i mean not much happening here there's just a tiny little bit of a shimmy there right around 35. these guys like what is that guy doing um, I'm going to bring it up, try one more round, and kind of tap it to provide uh, a little instability. 
So hands off, tap it, tap it, tap it. No, I'm, I'm stable. Um, so there you go. That's my experience with the GTS. Uh, it may be that the GTS has um, design characteristics that would imply uh, instability, but I'm just not seeing it. So I know other people are, and enough other people are, that, uh, you know, there are a bunch of posts about it and YouTube videos, etc. But I think that, um, as I said before, I think it's a dynamic system. And, you know, even given maybe a design propensity to, uh, to give wobble, um, you know, if your tires are well balanced and the pressure's right and the bearings are adjusted and yada, 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 and you don't have a load on the front and, you know, whatever the variables could be, uh, for whatever reason, the particular set of variables that I'm dealing with uh, mean that I've, I've got stability. I'm not, uh, I'm not getting much, much wobble at all, and it's pretty darn stable. So, yeah, um, interesting little experiment. Your mileage may vary. Um, you know, I don't see it as a design issue. I certainly don't see it as a safety issue or a control issue. Um, I'd be curious to hear uh, your thoughts in the comments below. Talk to you guys later.